one of the things to talk about more recently, I've been talking about, you know, being woke doesn't mean being broke. You know, I get attacked a lot, you know, over the years. A lot of people didn't know I was a millionaire before I even, before Instagram was even created. I made $3 million on a business deal and I had done a lot of things. You know, I was successful randomly throughout time. Not all of my businesses worked out. Some failed, some did well. I was fortunate enough to be on the side where a lot of things did kind of well and the ones that fell apart or didn't work out that well didn't affect everything. I didn't go, you know, down to ground zero. Um, so what people, you know, a lot of people are pocket watchers. So they watch everything that you got, everything that you do, everything that you say, and they're trying to analyze how much money you have in your pocket and how you got it. You know, forbidden knowledge, make all that money selling t-shirts, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> ties. Ties, you know. I think I sold two ties. You know, I might have made $95 selling t-shirts on Zazzle.com. The majority of the, you know, any money now recently I made selling the book, fortunately. But all these years it's been just really given out. I mean, if you add up all the, you know, the um the stuff that I've done, it's well over $12 million in donations and, and, and raised money, uh, which is well documented. Even just the scholarships alone for girls to go to college, uh, $10,000 a year for single mother uh, final notice electric bills, where we log in and pay the electric bill directly uh, in the winter, only in the winter months, because that's when it counts to me, that's when it counts the most. Last year we did 16000 and that was for single parents because some guys were like, well, I'm a single dad. You know, we get so many single dads. I was like, okay, okay. So we did single dads and we raised 16000 And we paid 16000 in final notice electric bills uh, last year. We're getting ready to start that campaign again. Now that it's getting extremely cold now. So we're starting the campaign. Right after Christmas, we'll be doing it again. And why am I bringing, I'm bringing this up to let you know that, you know, if you want to help people, there's two levels of this, maybe more than two, maybe there's three or four levels you can help a person at. You can give a homeless guy a sandwich, that's help. You know, you can you know, go to the grocery store for a disabled person and bring their food home to them. So, you know, go shopping for them so they don't have to worry about trying to get on a public bus and go through all this hoopla just to get to the store to buy some laundry detergent. You can help the person out like that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's also people on this planet that have to help people in a much bigger way. And the only way to do that is it takes, unfortunately, it takes this, you have to manipulate this fake money system to make it happen. And if you can't do that, then you can't, you can't make power moves and you can't help masses of people. You know, that's one of the things. You have to understand that to make power moves, you got, you, you know, and out there helping people, you know, in that, in that mindset, you, it's going to take finances. So if you're always thinking that I'm woke now and, you know, what are people going to think if I get this new car or if I got these, you know, these new shoes on? Please throw that away. Throw that, take that out of your mind and dump it in the garbage can. Live your life and live your best life because I'm going to live my best life 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to live my best life. I guarantee you that. I will not stop. So live your best life and forget about all this being woke. I got to be broke and and being, you know, you know, I'm sitting in the car, I'm doing an Instagram live, and I'm, I'm sitting, in, that day I was sitting in the Rolls Royce, which is actually mine, and then you got the RR on the seat, and the guy, people getting mad at you. <laughs> you in a Rolls Royce! <laughs> oh, so if I was in a Camry, it would be acceptable? Right. I'm in a car, and I'm giving you information. You know, you point at the moon, and the imbecile looks at the finger. You know? You have to understand. Listen, don't worry about these people out there. Don't worry about excelling. Don't worry about becoming financially successful. Don't worry about building businesses. Don't worry about getting big and setting big dreams because I'll tell you what, everything that we're learning today, the whole Egyptian mysteries are all fundamentally based off of manifestation. That's really what all of it's about. To put it in one small nutshell, that's really what it's all about, manifestation. So if you're walking around and you're taking in all this knowledge and following all these social, you know, conscious accounts and you're learning all this information and you're running around and you're telling people about all this consciousness and manifestation, and you can't manifest an electric bill, you got a problem. It's no wonder why they don't listen to you. They're looking at your lifestyle and they're going, mm, not acceptable. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. They've been wearing them same shoes for 10 years. I don't believe it. You have to see, sometimes you have to see material things. That's not you have to go over the board because there's a balance to everything. Don't get me wrong, now. But what I'm saying is you have to see material things as tools. If I pull up to a business meeting in a beat-up Toyota Camry, 
I'm probably not going to get that deal. Even if I have a million dollars in the bank, if I pull up with a chauffeur driving me in a Rolls Royce, I'm probably going to close that deal before I walk in the door. I'm playing in the matrix. You have to understand the game. Cars for me, cars are tools. I use cars as tools. I use my suits as tools. I use shoes as things that I like. I use them as tools. So it's got a dual purpose. See, I find a way to use them as tools. Tools to, for what? For to, to get an end to my means, to fulfill an agenda. What's the agenda? First of all, I'm not a breathitarian, so I don't live off of you know air yet. That's a goal, but I didn't make it yet. I'm not, I'm not there, guys. I gotta put food in my mouth and chew it and swallow it, which means I gotta pay for that food. And so do my kids. Okay? I didn't make it to that level yet. Last I checked, I still gotta log in and pay my light bill and my cell phone bill and all these other bills gotta get paid. So don't let people trick you. And I'm saying this because I you people like you that are here, to me, you're on another level. You're on, you're on another level. And people will see you start to excel in different areas of your life, and they're already noticing it now. And they get mad. Oh, they, they get so angry. <laughs> people who saw me making maneuvers and making business decisions and manifesting things on a consistent basis and traveling around the world from 20-something years ago, getting up and going, okay, I'm going to get on a plane today and go somewhere, and doing all these things, you know, and just getting completely steam hot mad and, done, and trying to sabotage. Even into business, you'll find business partners that are, oh man, we're going to go into business. And then when they see that you're manifesting things in your life and you're making, according to them, quote unquote, around the same amount of income. I had this experience with a call center. I had four partners in that call center. We're all taking home with bread, we're chopping up the money. But I'm living this lavish lifestyle in their eyes. They don't see all the other things that I got going on. All they know is he got the call center with us. And how come he can do this? How come he can do that? How come he can go there? How come he, how come? Why come? Why come? And then they start trying to sabotage. This is a real thing that you have to be, you know, able to see. You have to, you can't be blind. I'm letting you know ahead of time, don't be blind. You know, don't take immediate offense and put a big wall up and block people out. At the same time, use your discernment and intuition to understand and see things as they're happening, before they happen, or when they're happening, and be ready to make moves, you know, to protect your interests. Because this is the real world and real things, and we, we got a lot of real programs out here running around. I call these people programs, they're not even real people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of programs. I think that there's uh, homo sapiens. I think that there's actual aliens here from that look like us, and you know, we can't even tell if they're us or not. And I think there's programs out here. Yes. programs. People that have an avatar body, that eat, sleep, walk around, use the bathroom, everything else, but they're operating purely on programming. That's right. Soulless avatars operating on matrix programming. I think they're real. That's, what I, that's my personal opinion. I've been a lot of, a lot of people. I've been around the world quite a few times, and uh, I've interacted with a lot of different civilizations, and I'm just telling you, <laughs> Fortunately, you know, I've made it into a room with some very wealthy people, billionaires, you know. I was just doing a workshop on trading options. I was hosting with Samantha Bryant from ABC News, and we had a billionaire, a multimillionaire in that room listening to us talk about trading options and futures options. One of those gentlemen is so powerful in the Jamaican Stock Exchange, he's taking one of my companies to the Stock Exchange. So I've been in a room with a lot of people through these power moves that I keep telling you to make and plug into other people that I hear the whispers and I hear the talks from billionaires, like real billionaires. And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> there's people walking around that aren't real, real spiritual people. There's a lot of programs out here and you gotta be aware of them because they're, they're literally out here to try to find any kind of way they can, very slick and very smooth to take you down or find a way to put a you know, a sabotage, a little bug in you, and try to ruin anything you have going forward to make you know that's going to allow you to manifest. Like I said, if you can't manifest a light bill, 
then you're in the wrong, you know, you're in the wrong game. Just give this up and go back to, uh, you know, like the guy in the Matrix who was out there sitting, chilling with Agent Smith eating that steak. He was like, mm, this steak is so good. Just put me, plug me back into one of those uh, fake, you know, uh, machines. I want to be plugged right back into the Matrix. Um, because you can't run around here telling people you got all this power inside of you and you can't, you can't take care of the fundamental basics of life. They're not going to believe you. They're not going to believe you. So don't let anybody tell you that you got to be broke to be woke or make you feel bad if you start excelling financially in any area of your life. Don't let them make you feel bad about it. Smile and keep on doing what you do. Get downloads of information. You get downloads. You get information because there's a stream of information coming to you at all times. And when you're on the right frequency, the right resonant frequency, you will download that information. How I found out about quantum entanglement wasn't because I was looking for it. The words literally came to my mind, parabolic down conversion. And it happens to me all the time. A lot of times the information, even that I put on forbidden knowledge, information comes to me and then I hear it and I hear it, hear it in my head. So I'm like, okay, let me look this up and see what it's all about. That's how I found out a lot of, I swear to you, that's how I get a lot of my information. I get it and then I research it. And it's really amazing. So parabolic down conversion kept coming to my mind over and over and over again. So I go, okay, whatever, let me look this up. Parabolic down conversion. Didn't even spell it right the first time. And it's a system that where you take a laser and you take two uh, uh, particles, uh, protons, and you phase shift them to the same frequency and you entangle them through parabolic down conversion. Then, like the professor said, you can take one to the other end of the universe, and when you change the information in one local to you, the other one changes instantly. Okay? This is really amazing stuff. It proves that separation is truly an illusion. Furthermore, brain scans can reveal your decisions are, uh, you know, are made seven seconds before you even decide. I had talked about this for so many lectures before, and everybody was like, well, where can I find this information? And some people were like, you know, it doesn't need this. You made it all up. Oh, really? Okay, well, here's the actual one of the original articles, but this goes further back to a documentary that I actually saw where they took people, put them in rooms, like I told you before, and they put these pictures in front of them, and they put this cap on the head with electrodes, like you saw the lady who was moving the remote control car with her mind. And what happens? They start seeing these pictures so the computer can see what the mind looks like when it sees anguish, help, hate, hate, regret, love, you know, beauty. And all these things, these images were spaced out 10 seconds apart. All of a sudden, the same thing started happening to every single test case. What happened was, the brain was transmitting to the computer what the next image was going to be up to seven seconds in advance before it even showed up on the screen. What does that mean? It means that we're not living in real time. The avatar part, the physical part, this physicality is not in real time. The stream of consciousness is coming in and it appears to be up to a seven second delay, which is a massive amount of time, by the way, before you, we can actually propagate that data into our avatar body and then actually live it out or experience it. So when you get intuition, intuition is your ability to tap into that source in almost real time or get the information from the what we would consider from our perspective, the future, but in true reality, it's real time. So something that's getting ready to happen is probably already happened. Now, here's the cog in the wheel. It's in your reality tunnel that you have a little bit of control over. Now, a conscious decision in advance can alter the future reality. When people say, what do I do for a living? I tell them that I create ripples in the space-time continuum that alter future realities in the third dimension. That's my job. That's literally what I do every single day. I create ripples in the space-time continuum, and I'm changing the future from this perspective right here. Just like I'm a futurist in business and I see things coming before they even get there. I've done it so many times, it can't be a coincidence. Well, I take and apply the same thing to elevate mankind. Where's the next level of man going to? It's unified physics. This is what I'm teaching you here. But this is not new. This is what's in the mysteries. But it's broken down in the mysteries in a way where the average person can never understand what's being said. It just sounds like... Wow, 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 wow. Say a couple of hymns, do a little meditation, and something's supposed to happen. No, I'm showing you how it works through this method. This is the method needed for this millennium, for these people, for you right here today and now. This is the technique that's needed to bring this information forward. 
So the mind is not receiving. Even you're not seeing me in real time. Because why? You have to look at me, right? And then that means a photon's got to ping off of me and make it back to the retina. That takes time. Then it's got to go to the back of the brain and get deciphered. And then it's got to project a hologram of what I look like, look like up here. That takes a few milliseconds. So by the time you actually see me, I'm already moved to a different position. This is why in quantum encryption, you can only do one type of quantum encryption at a time. You know why? Because by the time you look at the atom, now the spin rate has changed. So you can only know the location or the spin rate. You can't know both simultaneously. This is what makes quantum encryption so good. It's very hard to crack something like that on a subatomic level. How do you break that code? Yeah.